Ebony Jones. Um, I'm a graphic designer, a writer, an illustrator, and an educator. I recently wrote a post of like five new queer artists you should check out. So I've been listening to all of those on repeat lately. There's a band called Too Attached, which is uh, Vivek Shreya and her sibling that like, the album's called Angry. And the lyrics are so radical. They're like, it's all of like, it's just like calling out like, um, just hypocrisy in the queer community and like issues between um of like biphobia in the queer community and like she so this one that's so incredible is this song called love is not love and basically it's like there's these the, there's this line that says like you want me to come and say love is love and we're all equal and we should all just love each other but love has never like kept my trans sisters safe like love doesn't get us health care or like educational opportunities or housing or whatever. It's just like so fun, so real, like it's, it's amazing. One of the biggest influences on my art, my digital illustration is Kehinde Wiley. Um, Cause I do a lot, I kind of riff off of his aesthetic um, in terms of like, I do, a, I'm doing a series of like trans bodies, like trans nudes, but in like poses of luxury and repose with like really intricate, beautiful backgrounds and stuff like that. Um, which obviously is similar to what Kehinde Wiley does with like images of black men in like, similarly like in regal, luxurious, like um, vulnerable poses with like beautiful, intricate, um, expensive like backgrounds and stuff and like different aesthetics. Um, so Kehinde Wiley is like a huge influence for me, for sure. In my work, a lot of what I do is navigate the tension between um, normalizing trans people and also resisting assimilation in a certain way. So it's like a, it's an interesting kind of balancing act, right? The only times that we generally see trans bodies, especially nude trans bodies, um, in media is either when we're sex workers, um, which is, you know, fine, but that's unfortunately like often kind of the only time that we see trans women, especially, or um, when we're murdered or dead bodies, right? Um, and so there's just like not a wide, there hasn't often been a wide representation for trans women in media. Like I remember when I was really young, um, the first time I ever saw a trans woman ever in life was in The Crying Game. When like, there's this woman throughout the whole movie and at the end, it like pans down and she's got a cock. And it's like the guy who is into her is so disgusted that he like doubles over, he's vomiting or something, right? It's like this huge reveal. It's this, oh my God, can you believe that this woman is a trans? It's like it's supposed to be gross and shocking. So I wanted to do a series of pieces where we see trans women where in poses that are, and in circumstances that are almost always exclusively reserved to cis women. So cis women's bodies have been the standard of beauty for centuries, for you know, for thousands of years, right? Um, classical sculpture and marble and stuff, you know, it's always been cis women. Um, and that's always been like, this is the most beautiful object that exists, is the human form or whatever. Um, and so I wanted to kind of be like, well, um, trans women are beautiful, um, but we never get to see just like trans women be luxurious and be relaxed and be just like draped in like finery and just like in these poses like that people have been painting and sculpting of cis women for thousands of years of just like relaxed and just like chilling and just beautiful, you know?